Welcome back. We're discussing the ramifications of the arrest warrant for Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir and how it could affect the desperate Darfur region and other conflicts in the country. I'm joined by the Reverend Franklin Graham, an American evangelist who's met with President Bashir four times, the most recent being just uh, a week or so ago. He joins us from uh, Boone, North Carolina, the headquarters of his charitable and missionary uh, organization, Samaritan's Purse. Also with us is the former U.S. envoy su to Sudan, Ambassador Richard Williamson, who stepped down in January and has yet to be replaced there. He's joining us from Chicago. Reverend Franklin, uh, one thing that, that occurred to me, I might put to you, um, you mentioned about uh, appealing to, to uh, President Bashir as a Muslim to, to look after the people in Darfur. Um, I was thinking, you actually, it puts you in a tricky position because you're in, a, in the middle of a conflict that does have religious lines on it. Uh, and of course, that, you know, after 9-11, you were, you were known for making comments saying that uh, Islam is, a, is an evil and wicked religion. Um, does, doesn't that put you in a compromising position when it you know, comes to trying to be a, a fair party in this conflict? No, uh, I, I'm a minister, of course, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I have big differences uh, with the teachings uh, of Islam, but not with the people of Islam. Uh, I, I, I love them, care for them. Uh, of course, I, I believe the Bible is the sole authority, uh, the sole truth. Uh, the Bible teaches that, that God so loved this world that he gave himself. God uh, became flesh in the form of Jesus Christ and came to die for our sins. and. He shed his blood on Calvary's cross for the sins of this world. Now, this, this is contrary to the teaching of Islam, but this is what I believe, and I respect what Muslims believe. And uh, I, I certainly would want all Muslims to know about God's love and how they can have forgiveness of sin through faith in Christ. But uh, for me as a minister, I want to show God's uh, good and his love to all people, regardless of their religion. Okay. And so I don't think this puts me in a compromising position. I, I, I'm, I want to be honest and, and tell people what I believe. I don't shy away from what I believe. And I'm happy to disagree with people who want to disagree. I, but I guess, we need to help the people yeah. of Darfur. And we have to watch the people in the South Sudan because there's millions of people's lives that are at risk there if that comprehensive peace agreement uh, fails, Riz. This, this is so important and this, this peace agreement has to be implemented and it's not implemented. And if this thing could unravel and you could have not 50,000 from like Abia, and, and I agree with what the, the, the good ambassador was saying, uh, that is a tremendous problem, but it could escalate to where it's not 50,000, but it could be several million people displaced mm -hmm. and millions of lives lost if the war between the South and the North erupts again, and we cannot allow that to happen. All right. I, I, I won't get into a debate on religion, of course, sir, because we're, we're trying to focus on, on uh, Sudan, but I do want to get a call in from Aman uh, in Nebraska who has a question on this subject. So go ahead, Aman. Uh, good afternoon. Hi, right, go ahead. Uh, I want to say about, I, I see the past on the TV, the way he talked, it's really, God bless that pastor, because he went to Sudan and he see everything. Okay. Uh, I'm by myself, when I get out from Sudan, American ambassador, they will remove me from Sudan to Egypt, because otherwise I will be killed. Because the, the things we see in southern Sudan is a lot. Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let me ask, Aman, yes. let me ask, let me ask him, Master Williamson, uh, Master, how, how, to what extent is the ICC's move perhaps a message to other uh, leaders in the region that, that there is going to be some kind of accountability or at least an effort for uh, accountability? Well, let me make two points. Uh, first, I do think the whole issue of accountability up to the top, up to heads of state, is something the international community, including the United States, has supported through a variety of vehicles in the last 15 years. The Special Tribunal on Yugoslavia, on Rwanda, on Sierra Leone, uh, and of course, the, uh, the ICC. So I think we're moving toward uh, a sense of justice and accountability, which is good. But if I could just say something else, having made many trips to Darfur, seen the suffering, as I have in the South, gone to uh, refugee camps and IDP camps in all regions of Darfur. These people deserve so much better. And the international community, through the 13 humanitarian organizations that have now been expelled, we're helping to provide that. But as we try to deal with that, I let me also note that I've had negotiations with this government of Southern Sudan, with President Bashir, and uh, the government in Khartoum and with many rebel groups. There is mutual ground where progress can be made on this. G 
Gutter has an initiative, a diplomatic initiative that provides a platform for progress. I urge all those parties, North and South, as well as the various rebel groups and the government of Sudan, to seize this opportunity with the Gutter Initiative and make progress. But ultimately, the suffering of those 2.7 million people who've been displaced and the memory of the 300,000 plus who have been massacred because of this mayhem and murder, we need to have humanitarian progress and the government of Sudan has that obligation. Okay. Thank you. Um, Reverend uh, Graham, uh, there's an email that came in from New York in the USA, if I may put this to you, sir. It's from the Reverend Max B. Surjan, uh, Surjadinata in New York, who says, I'm very suspicious of any comment by Franklin Graham. It was reported that he met with Bashir on the day of the arrest warrant. This indicates that his motives to promote his uh, evangelical cause rather than the establishment of justice and human rights were Franklin Graham's primary goal. I mean, I wonder to what degree that, uh, you know, how you respond to the idea that you're there to evangelize. But the other thing is uh, to get your perspective on how um, President Bashir seemed to respond to this idea of the, the International Criminal Court coming after him in a serious way. Well, first of all, I, I am a, an evangelist, uh, no question about that. I, I want everyone in the world, uh, even you, Riz, and everyone watching, to know that God loves you and He cares for you and that you're very special to Him and that Jesus Christ died on a cross for your sins. And all of us, if we repent and receive Christ by faith, God will forgive us. Now, as it relates to being with Bashir on the, the, the 4th, uh, I was with him in his office just a, a few hours uh, prior to the ICC. He talked about that. Uh, he was uh, uh, somewhat concerned uh, about how this was going to affect our ongoing negotiations and relations. I, I went from his office directly to Juba where I met with Savakir the same day. Uh, Savakir was very concerned about the ICC, uh, their ruling setting back the peace uh, process as it relates to the South. We talk about the 300,000 Darfurians, and if it was one Darfurian killed, it's one too many, but in the South you had close to two and a half million people killed in the South, and, and this is where the, the great bloodletting took place. And I just don't think that it is worth jeopardizing the peace process uh, uh, for, for one person to, to make a point. Because even if this indictment, uh, the, the issue arrest warrant, uh, are they, who's going to go to Khartoum and put handcuffs on him? Nobody. So you make a statement, you make a point, but the point is the situation gets worse. And I believe President Obama, this is going to be his first test case internationally is, right. is the Sudan. And this was, this was warned early on and when well, he was a candidate, there, there was going to be a major test to his presidency and right. I think the Sudan is going to be it. Reverend Graham, I have to thank you there uh, for joining us. And uh, Richard Williamson, Ambassador Williamson, thank you, sir. Thank you for being with us, gentlemen, and thank you for watching. Now, here are the results of the uh, chat room poll we conducted a few minutes ago when we asked, do you think the arrest warrant for Sudan's president helps or hurts the chance for a resolution to the Darfur crisis? 61% of you said it hurts the possibility, while 39% said it's helpful. And thank you for being with us. On the next show, we speak with the father of vegetarianism and animal rights, Australian philosopher Peter Singer. In his new book, The Life You Can Save, Acting Now to End World Poverty, he argues that if you can afford a bottle of water, you can afford to give to charity. For me and the team, we'll see you next time.